Hi, my name is Wor Kai Shi. I was one of the student leaders of the 1989 Tiananmen student movement. Now I live in exile in Taiwan. Today, I would like to talk to you about my adopted country. Taiwan, a term that has been long neglected and almost forgotten um, by, the, by the whole world, becoming a recently a, a trend because of its excellent performance in fighting against uh, the coronavirus and then of course with its uh, remarkable outcome but also uh, has a great deal to do with the general secretary of the world health organization uh, 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 spent three minutes in a press conference uh, calling there is an attack come from taiwan and that has occupied many prime time and uh, pages on the international media so for those of you who have never been to taiwan and then probably even have a difficulty separating uh, uh, taiwan from thailand and maybe in a long time you are under an impression it is part of china just not ruled by the beijing central uh, government uh, like hong kong or macau because that's what you hear uh, in a group uh, china and hong kong and macau and taiwan and then you might thought that's the case. This is a three minutes crash course for you to understand uh, what is the real situation and then how it become a problem to the world. First of all, let's talk about what it is like Taiwan today. Well, to begin with, Taiwan is an independent country. It's not ruled by China or anybody else. Its own government is democratically ele uh, elected it's probably one of the most advanced democracy in the world today. It has an independent judicial system and an effective jurisdiction. And guarded by an independent army, a coast guard, border control, police force, all these things. And then, of course, the people of Taiwan travel around the globe with their own passport. Uh, Taiwan is an economic powerhouse. It ranks... 22nd, according to the World Bank. And it basically controls the world's uh, semiconductor industry by something like 70%. So there's a good chance the phone, the smartphone, uh, the computer you're using or tablet you are using to watch this video is run by Taiwan controlled and manufactured technology. You will need a passport and a valid entrance permit, like a visa, to enter Taiwan. And when you obtain those uh, entrance permits, you either do it from Taiwan government directly or in one of its consulate outside of China. And Taiwan's currency is called New Taiwan Dollar. It is an internationally accepted monetary unit. So there you are. Currency, passports, visa, border control, governments, army, independent jurisdiction, independent judicial system, and all these elements to prove it's an independent country. But it is not a member of the United Nations. And the world just learned that it is not a member of the World Health Organization either. In fact, it is only a member of uh, very few international organizations, such as World Trade Organization, under a ridiculously mouthful name. A, a separate custom territory of Taiwan, Penghu, Kimen, and Mazu. A detailed, described, uh, geographic and economic term to avoid what it really is, a country. And in the one of the most inclusive international gathering, the Olympic game, the Taiwanese athlete must enter the arena under the banner of Chinese Taipei. There are only 17 countries has official diplomatic relation with Taiwan. And the official name of Taiwan is the Republic of China. Why? Here comes the two minutes history class to explain how did this happen. Taiwan was ceded to Japan 
uh, by the Manchurian uh, ruled Qing Empire in 1895. Twenty some years later, the last emperor abdicated. Uh, the empire become the Republic of China. Another few uh, another few decades down the road, Japan lost World War Two, and Taiwan was then handed over back to the Republic of China. It became one, a province of it. But right after the World War, China fell into a civil war. The ruling KMT, the Nationalist Party, was ousted by the communists to Taiwan in 1949. The government of the Republic of China moved to Taiwan along with what's rest of the army, about some half a million of them, and then about a million refugee. The civil war then halted and they become a standoff uh, across Taiwan Strait, and the both sides claim the sovereignty of each other. The Republic of China, residing in Taipei, being the winning party of the uh, Second World War and then the founding member of the United Nations, successfully blocked out uh, the People's Republic of China, at that time known as the Communist China or the Red China, from the international arena more than two decades. In the 70s, the People's Republic of China kicked the Republic of China out of the United Nations. Just a few years later, the United States established diplomatic relations uh, with Beijing and cut off with uh, its uh, relation with Taiwan because that's what China demanded. And then the world followed suit. From that time on until now, Taiwan has been step by step isolated, or to say precluded by the world. In the last three, four decades, Taiwan has developed into a economic powerhouse, at the same time, a very advanced democracy. One of the outcome of Taiwan becoming a democracy is that it no longer wishes to uh, claim sovereignty over China. At the same time, the People's Republic of China has also grown into an economic superpower, a military superpower, and a nationalist, if not fascist, state, totalitarian state, insisting its sovereignty over Taiwan and then the world to keep their promises. When they first established diplomatic relations with the People's Republic to treat Taiwan as anything but a country. By now, I have lived in Taiwan for more than two decades. And there's this one important fact that I would like to emphasize is that although completely isolated by the world, the Taiwanese people have demonstrated their willpower and determination and became one of the most advanced democracy in the world. The Taiwanese people appreciate their freedom more than probably any other democracies in today's world. It's like they breathe in and out freedom and they know it. You have to appreciate and respect that.